Hey there debaters, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you a couple of tools to make your debate life easier, Microsoft Word, Verbatim, and Site Creator. So let's dive right in. The first thing you're going to want to do is check out the link in bio, where you can sign up for a free Microsoft Office account. It's free for all students. So once you're here, you're going to put in your school email address, thanks to my good friend Lauren Wong for letting me demo, since I already have an account. So you're going to put in your school email address, of course ours is PAUSD then get started. Then you're gonna choose I'm a student, right there. Put in all your information, create an account just like you would for any other application. Uh, put in your password, then you're gonna get a sign up code um, at your email, put it in once you get it. I mean, this is a fake date of birth. You can be truthful or fake, it's up to you. And then of course, whatever country you live in, make sure to uncheck Make sure it's not checked and then click start and wait for it to create your account. Okay, so now you have made a school account, but the problem is there are some sharing limitations on the school accounts. So what I would recommend you do is make a personal Microsoft account as well. And this is how you do it. So first you're going to start by going to account.microsoft.com. That's shown right here. Then you're going to click sign in. Then you're going to do create one. And then you're going to put in your email, any like personal email, non-school email you have. This is just an example. You know, make a password, just how you normally create an account, and then verify your email. Of course, I don't have this email, so I can't actually do that, but that's the general process. All right, so the next thing you want to do is just simply download Microsoft Word from the App Store or the Microsoft Store. It'll be free on both. Once you've done that, then it's time to start getting set up. So you'll be greeted by this window that says sign in. You're going to want to sign in with your personal account here. So the one that you just created. So here I am signing with my personal email and password, not my school account. That'll come later. So it's going to look for licenses and say you don't have a license. So what you're going to do is click use other account and then sign in with your school account because your school account, remember, has a free license. So once it asks you for a license, sign in with your school account and a license was found and activated. The pop-up goes away and Word is ready to use. The next tool you're going to need to install is Verbatim. It's available at paperlessdebate.com slash verbatim, although all the links are in the bio. You're going to click on whatever operating system you have and then use the normal install process. So I'm on Mac, so I'm going to install the DNG here, drag it to the applications folder, um, and then I'm going to open applications but now here's where it gets tricky i'm going to search for the file and click on open the application but the problem is that mac os goes crazy because it doesn't know who the developer is this is not so much of a problem on windows but you're going to have to go to system preferences gatekeeper and then click open anyway and put in your password it's then going to give you another warning and you're going to have to click open i promise you verbatim is safe apple just freaks out because it doesn't know the developer see word and verbatim work together well and the tutorial begins. So just install check, configure in always on mode and normal, choose high school, continue straight, don't matter these, these don't work, keep going, and verbatim setup is now complete. So everything should be good. You should see an add-ins tab or a debate tab on Windows. We'll learn more about how to use that later, but for now, you're gonna use the next tool, which is called Site Creator. So to get there, you're gonna search up Site Creator Extension on Google, then you're gonna choose the first result right there. Then you're gonna install that to your Chrome or Edge browser. It won't work on Safari or Firefox, unfortunately. You're gonna add the extension and then it'll come up. Gonna close the window and pin it for safety so you can access it easier. Right now it's turned on. You're gonna click options to adjust a few things. Turn on copy selected text with site. Turn on don't show ratings, they're not very helpful. Then do custom, select all of it, paste it, then you're going to want to add for debate right like that you're going to want to add year year so you can have your card you know smith 21 whatever the card says then you're going to go to the end and add your initials so that we know who cut the card and now we're going to actually learn how to cut a card and do some organization in our verbatim file so first what you're going to do is actually open verbatim go to your add-ins menu and the first thing we're going to do is use the pocket tool to create the top level most important heading in the document so I'm going to click F4 or pocket, and then I'm going to call it AF contentions, let's say, because that's a very general, broad title that we can put other things under. Now I'm going to practice using the second level heading, which is called hat. There's pocket. 
that's the first level and then hat is going to be the second level so i'm going to click hat and then i'm going to call this i don't know daniel's contentions let's say it's a shared case file so that's the second level second most important heading now we're going to do the third most important heading hat and call this the name of the contention so let's say um unions are harmed by right to work laws let's say all right so now that we're set up we're going to cut our card so here we have our card you know it's a standard axios article about impacts of right to work laws we got our site creator on in the bottom right corner everything's filled out so we're going to copy the article paragraph before paragraph after proper cutting technique uh, copy and copy it there control option C or control alt C I believe on the PC it will light up blue when you copy it and then you're gonna click paste right there not normal paste you have to click it there or click F2 see now we get our card and all the formatting has been removed including the links so you're gonna select it all right there then you're gonna click condense or F3 which is gonna get rid of all the spaces make it a lot easier for you to cut the card now let's zoom in a little bit right there and now we got our citation and we got our card so we're ready to start cutting the card so let's say I want to cut right to work laws I'm gonna click emphasis right there emphasis and then highlight so now we have emphasis and highlight so I'm ready to read it or you can just click one or the other it's up to you and then let's take this sentence emphasis highlight and continue cutting the card as you normally would. I'm kind of doing this randomly here. All right, and then this will be our last sentence. And now comes the fun part. And once you've already cut the card, you're gonna click the shrink button, and that is going to short shrink all of the rest of the text that you didn't highlight. Voila, so now we have our cut card and it's very easy to read because the rest of the text is shrunk smaller and it didn't take us much time to create. In case you want to get rid of it, you're just going to click clear and that's going to get rid of the emphasis and then you can double click highlight to get rid of the highlight in case you want to recut the card, but we don't want to recut the card. So we're just going to go control Z command Z. So there's a couple other tools. There's underline, which just underlines there's site, which is another way you can put your citation. I don't prefer that but you can just do the pack 22 if you don't uh, want to do the whole thing. Now tag, this is very important. You wanna write tag on the top of your cards. So that's the fourth level heading. You wanna write a tag of what the card says and the author so that it's easier to read during case. So I would say, right to work laws depress wages and hurt unions, pack 22 fines, right? So then it's easy to read and you know where it is. And you can also see on the left side, all of our headings are showing up in this outline menu that's very helpful. You can condense it and expand it right on the left there by clicking the arrows and it makes it very easy. Now let's talk about a couple of the tools and menus in verbatim. So first you have your settings menu. You can click on verbatim settings. Most of the menus you don't care about, but the format and keyboard allow you to change your formatting settings and your keyboard shortcuts in case you need to do that. So see, I'm gonna change my font size, etc. And now if we go to this menu, which is caseless menu, that just shows the caseless, but that feature doesn't work, so ignore it. The format menu has some helpful tools. You can play around with them, such as Uni Highlight, which makes every highlight in your document the same color. So it's helpful if you kind of have a disorganized block file. You can check on the view menu, which has some settings in visibility mode. Not sure what that is. Then you can use the share menu to flash it to USB or email the document, a little bit antiquated, but that's okay. Then you have the tools menu, which shows you some timers and audio recordings that can be helpful in a debate round. Now moving to the other side, this is where the fun starts. So you have new document if you need to create a new document, but now comes the fun part. You have new speech. So let's say I'm in a round and I wanna make a new speech document to put my cards in to read during the round. So I'm gonna call the speech document, you know, the 1AC, all right? Then it's gonna create me a new document, I'll just save it. And then if I, click, if I highlight the card I want and click the tilde button, then that's gonna send this card to the speech document to make it really easy. So now that we have this in the speech document, it becomes very easy, right? The same thing has been pasted into the speech document and it'll be easy to read during the round or send to your opponent or the judge. 
So you can also, if you don't know the tilde button, you can just click that button to do send to speech if you prefer. It works the same way. So yeah, it'll make debating a lot easier. So now the final task in this lecture is going to be to teach you how to share the files with your partner or your teammate or your coach, whatever. So here uh, we're going to upload the file first to OneDrive. We need to be logged into our personal Microsoft account to be able to do this because there are limitations on the school accounts. So we're going to wait for it to upload. Now it's auto saving so you don't have to save it manually. You're going to invite people or copy them on a link. But if you copy them on a link, they can only view it in the word web site. So I'm going to add my partner, Yash, to this Yash to this file. Whatever your partner's personal Microsoft email account is. And then I say he can edit. All right, so now it should be shared. And now I'm going to teach you how to open files that have been shared with you. So if we go to open or open recent, if they if you had opened the file before, you're going to go to shared and then see we have lots of files that were shared with me by my partner, my teammates. So for example, let's say I want to open this speech from uh, ASU tournament. I'll just click on it and double click or click open. And see now we have this uh, very messy speech document right here. All right, so now you should know how to share files in Microsoft Word. All right, thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe to the channel and check out my other videos if you want to learn more about debate or watch some rounds. If you have any questions, feel free to email me at danielgaripasholland at gmail.com. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great rest of your day.